Hello everyone, this is our second monthly update of the year, covering everything that has been made in January. Before I start, I just wanted to say thank you so much for all the support in the last video, which currently is sitting at around 24,000 views, which we really didn't expect um, to get, so thank you very much. Um, we also hit 4.6 thousand Discord members, which is amazing as well. So, as the update happened slightly differently this month, we had four updates, starting uh, with the World update, followed by Code, Dragon, and finally back to World. We'll be dividing this update into Dragon, Creature, World, and Other, with some special announcements towards the end. So, we had a nice productive week, starting with finishing all the model sheets for small dragons, these are used to help Ek, our modeler, make our creatures or dragons at a fast pace. This has the benefit of allowing us to finally create a real slice chart, so here are all the small tier playables. This will be slowly added to. Uh, the next dragons to be added will be medium sized dragons. Many people have been interested in our skins and what customization will look like in the future, and we've decided that we want to add part of that sooner than we originally planned. So we've begun work on developing our skin customization system. We've completed some of this, but we won't be allowing testing of this until we're very happy with it uh, and the UI is implemented. But this will allow you to choose a number of different things to color. However, it will have limits as we don't want bright pink or green neon dragons flying around. Our friends over at Omni Sound have got back from their holidays and have begun to start working on the sounds. This will take some time, however, they have decided to start with the icy sounds. Uh, they currently finish 21 sounds ranging from idle, death, flying, eating, bite, and most of the calls. These we worked on all this month to hopefully have them finished. Uh, this work is not just for fully grown dragons, there will be different sounds for the age and location they are in. We will also add a feature where dragons will mostly sound different to one another, making for a more immersive environment. This means that dragons will have randomized calls, um, calls to have higher or lower pitch. So there is a lot of work that needs to be done. But the guys at Omni are professionals, so I'm very confident in their abilities to get this done. The Kirin has not progressed as much as we intended due to real life circumstances, but thanks to our very kind supporters over on Patreon, we've managed to get Ek to work on the models part time, so it should be done relatively soon. Many of the animations are indeed finished, so we could theoretically throw the Kirin into the build currently, but we don't think it would be a good idea. Uh, but here are a few of the more interesting animations that Ek has made so far. While those are being shown, uh, we have some interesting comments on the previous video and in our Discord about Kirin, the Icy Crown, and Volgan. The Kirin is based on Eastern mythology. This is also known as a Girin, Kirin, or Quillin. Ours, however, is not a flyer. It does not have wings, 
and please keep in mind it's not a horse, deer or a moose, it's kind of a hybrid between them all, so it can look strange how it moves, but this is by design. The Vulcan is also not meant to be a good flyer. It's meant to be a land-based predator that can fly, hence why its legs do not tuck in and its tails all over the place while in flight. This will eventually be toned down, however, because we do agree that it's a bit um, wild. Also, for some keen-eyed people in the last update, you may have seen this strange speed difference between walking and running for the Vulcan. This is not going to be an animation. This is just a sped up walking animation this uh, will eventually be replaced for the tech demo as a quality of life update once everything is finished so TLGR it's not finished it needs polishing uh, with the icy crowns a few comments on its wings this will be edited further down the line to have some better weight painting um, that should sort out some of the wing problems that are shown and just like the Vulcan will have a quality of life update before the crowdfunding. So time for the creatures now. The team has also been busy with the new lizard mount, a new AI species, scathe animations and the start of a new creature. The lizard mount was given the name of an alpine monitor which makes sense because it's based off of a monitor species for those that did not watch the last video, this will be a jungle creature that's able to climb over very rough terrain and can have a one seat or two seat saddle with the latter uh, making the lizard unable to climb over vertical surfaces. We have also revamped an old species known as the Shellopod. This will be the largest taming game and one of the largest permanent AI on the map. This will be able to be tamed, however, it would probably be, be limited to one per team as these large beasts will require vast amounts of food to keep and due to their size, a very large base. These creatures will act as moving fortresses, being able to be equipped with armor, siege weapons and anti-dragon capabilities, but if this dragon is killed, everything on its back will be lost along with the time it takes to grow or tame. Myself and Ek have begun to create the Black Death on livestream. It started from a small cube and in roughly two hours has become this. This will be the last AI creature to be added to the tech demo, which will act as a perfect food source for humans and dragons alike. While this creature is passive towards humans, if attacked they will fight back. We may add the possibility of it being a tame. Um, these creatures um, will allow them to pull carts, uh, but this is only if we get uh, the time, which is unlikely to, to happen. The scathe animations are now on track to be made over the next month. The scathe is an AI predator that patrols on the map in small groups of three to five members, hunting down anything smaller than itself, or just weaker. Scathe have nests dotted around the map, and a lucky human player will be able to steal the egg and raise it for themselves. So now we move on to the world update. So Noah has been very hard at work with our tech demo map with optimization efforts managing to improve most places to well above 60 FPS for moderately good NPCs, although we want as many people to be able to play as possible. We decided that the dock looked perfect and safe, so we burnt it down. We decided that we needed a few more options when it came to structures and places, so you may find more ruins dotted around the map. We also changed some of our environments. Our floating islands have had some polish added, such as more land, bridges, to allow for movement between them, as well as adding more foliage on top of each one. Um, we have added a Stonehenge-like structure, the claw, and a few more things for you to discover. Changes to water have been made. We added rain effects on rivers, so they have gone from looking like this to this. Our largest change, however, is our new location, the Crystal Caves. This is a large underground cavern with its own river and large crystals throughout the cave that can be affected by light changes, such as when a dragon uses an ability. Uh, this cave also connects to the large mushroom cave um, which in itself is another really large cave. And well, that's it. That's the entire tech demo map. 
yep, that's right, it's done. It just needs testing and bug fixing, and that should not take too long um, to do. So what's next for the world updates? Well, I'm happy to announce that we've been starting on our first official game map. Uh, this will be a desert map, it will be a 12 by 12 uh, kilometer map in size with the ocean at the bottom and several types of biomes uh, within it such as desert dunes, arid lands and a few more similar areas. There will also be a huge underground cave system uh, but we will sort out the above ground stuff first. But this uh, will be a brand new ecosystem with new creatures and many other hidden secrets. Okay, and lastly, moving on to other things that we've done. So our old server was quite outdated and was not actually meant for gaming. So we've been able to, thanks to our patrons, of course, to rent a very good server that has increased performance and stability. However, we've had to spend uh, some time making, making it work and tweaking a few things, sorting out areas and the like. Um, we conducted a stress test on the new server which allowed us to find an error with the team systems and the calls with dragons. Um, this would produce errors which would pile up on the server eventually causing, causing 300,000 errors which would crash the server. Um, we have managed to fix this which has also increased stability and reduced crashes. However, we will still need to improve stability and performance as our goal is to have 100 players per server minimum. Our programmers have been very busy. We've added a main menu, which obviously will change, but for now works fine. Then we added a loading screen, so people actually know when it's loading when you click play, rather than it just randomly working. Um, we then added settings, which seems to have improved a lot of issues with lower end PCs. NPCs? PCs. <laughs> Uh, we also improved render distance of dragons, but this still needs more improvements as there seems to be a few issues with it. Um, we have also made some minor changes to the map, some map fixes to stop falling through the terrain. We made the nights darker as it was too bright. We also reduced weather from happening as it seemed to rain every few minutes, which was infuriating. Character selection was added, so you're now able to see how the dragon will look, depending on its gender and the skin that is used. Uh, you'll also be able to rotate this. Um, this will eventually be used in the skin customization mentioned earlier in the video. We have begun to make our funding skins as well. So this is our first £10 tier skin. Um, these will eventually be added to all base dragons for those that back on the Kickstarter or Indiegogo, but that will not be for a little while. So this is some big news, and before I announce it, I need to clarify, nothing bad has happened, this is not bad news. We've taken the decision to delay the funding from March to quarter two of this year. Now, some of you may be disappointed, but this is to give us time to produce the game we want to and give you guys an actually enjoyable game to play. We have had um, some discussions behind the scenes and we've come to the conclusion that in the current state, the game is actually currently in a tech demo for our patrons and content creators to try and play. However, once this is set to go public, it will be in more of a pre-alpha state due to the amount of content it actually will have, which brings us onto the plan for our now pre-alpha public build. So be prepared for this very large list I'm going to go through. So I'm going to start with Dragon stuff first. The Kirin, Icy Crown and Vulcan will all be in the pre-alpha. They will all have a skin system that was mentioned earlier on, with a few handmade skins alongside them. A scent system will also be added to help dragons find food or drink. Combat will also be part of this to add to the survival elements of the game as well as their abilities along with a team system for each species. Humans will be added as well as uh, the choice of a few character models to choose from along with basic crafting systems. Um, this will include weapons, tools, armor and workbenches. 
combat will be added as well along with other survival, survival elements like hunger and thirst resource, resource gathering such as wood, stone, ore and other things a team system so you can see where your friends are and of course a base building system although this will probably be a prefab structures for now if we do get time we may add scathe taming as mentioned earlier on um, also nomads will not be added in the pre-alpha the environments will include a number of different AI this will include Williams William warriors scathe antelope and the black death they will be scattered around the map with certain AI actually moving from location to location in herds. Also, the Williams, Antelope and Scaith do have all their animations currently. They just need to be polished or redone to be in line with our level of quality um, that we currently have now. Resource nodes will be scattered around the map as well as berry bushes, fruit and vegetables. A little thing to add is that everything will also require sounds, so they will have to be done as well. Funding wise, we'll be making every backer skin and placing them on the Vulgan so you lot can see what they look like in game. And if we do have time, uh, we will do this for the Icy and Kirin as well. The Indiegogo page will also be updated and made to look far. Um, well, look nicer than it currently does and made public a few weeks in advance of the funding period I do need to make sure that that is possible though um, a short 1-2 to two minute long trailer will also be shown off which will contain in game stuff as we don't want to be deceptive we will then also do an extended trailer with our plans for the future of the Wings of Dawn and finally we will be updating the Steam page which is already outdated as is this will bring us into our pre-alpha state, and once mass testing has been finished, bugs have been fixed, and the game has been balanced, and all animations have been polished slash changed, we will then release it to the public and start our funding adventure. So um, this is our plan, and it's what we think is possible in the time period for some contacts Dragons only require the team system to be fixed, the skin system added, and the scent to be started. The Kirin also needs to be started, but most of that has already been pre-made. Humans need to basically be started from scratch, although armor, hunger and thirst, and the team system has been made, and with the AI, everything has already been modeled and could be thrown in now. It just needs more polish. So yeah, we're actually pretty close and we will be updating our public Trello list and our Google Docs tech demo list, now going to be renamed to pre-alpha, so you can keep up to date on it. If you want to help support us and get access to the tech demo um, to try out well, to try it out right now, uh, please head over to our Patreon and become Y or above. Um, please do not feel that you have to, you know, pay or join or do anything like that. Joining our Discord, being active, and telling others is more than enough. As I mentioned in the previous video, if any content creators want more info or want to get access, please come and message me, Clack Knight, over on our Discord. But thank you all so much for the support. I will reply to as many comments as possible, as I think I replied to almost every comment in the last one as well. So um, I'll do the same here. Um, so thank you so much for watching. We also do have a special video coming out on Chinese New Year, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but yeah, um, thank you for watching. Have a good day, afternoon, or evening. And yeah, bye.